Welcome back. The dawn chorus refers to the beautiful collective sounds of birdsong as morning breaks during the breeding season and has also spawned a Europe-wide radio phenomenon. Following on from the huge success of the European Dawn Chorus last year, broadcaster Derek Mooney and his Mooney Goes Wild team will once more broadcast the amazing natural phenomenon from locations right across Europe tomorrow. Derek joins us now. Good morning to you, Derek. I hope. Good morning. <laughs> I hope the weather is good. Keeping everything crossed. Actually, when I came in here this morning, I got a bit of a, oh my goodness, feeling about it because it's a bit it's windy out there. And the weather has changed. It's been beautiful all week. And all of a sudden, it's quite breezy, and the breeze is it, our enemy. It's supposed to be lovely tomorrow, though. Is it? I think, yeah. At what time? Mind you, we were supposed to have a heat wave this week. The time is key. <laughs> For anyone who's just tuned in, Derek, and isn't familiar with uh, the whole concept of the dawn chorus, will you explain it to us? Yeah, as, as, as we just said there, it is the early morning sound of birdsong. And it happens at this time of year because it is the breeding season. And basically what, happen, what happens is sunlight, uh, sun uh, rises in the east, travels across the planet, sets in the west, and as it hits the various countries, the birds wake up and they sing. And it's usually the birds with the biggest eyes, not necessarily the biggest birds, the birds with the biggest eyes that catch most of the light and wake up first. So something like a blackbird, you know, has big eyes. You know, if you ever saw a blackbird in your garden, you can actually see the eyes on the side of the head. Yeah, yeah. Well, those are usually one of the first singers because they catch the light and they wake up. And you know the old saying, the early bird catches the worm? Yes. The ones that wake up first are singing away. They're telling everybody, I live here, this is my home. Don't invade. And at the same time, they're saying, I live here and I'm looking for a mate. How do you fancy a bit of... Okay. How's your father? There's all sorts of, thing. Sorts of so calls going to on. action going on. <laughs> yeah. Can we have a little listen? Males, and, and maybe you can tell us what, what we're hearing. Maybe I can. So this is it. <laughs> no, no pressure now, Derek. Where's that coming from? <laughs> you have everything in there. That's a kind of a dawn chorus. You've got some thrushes in there. OK. You've got a wren in there in the background. You've got a wood pigeon. You can kind of... <laughs> you can kind of hear that in the background. There's blackbirds in there. That's very and the impressive, is in there. isn't it? See, the thing is, he could no, be, just listen he off could be making it up. Well, well, I'm just listening to the name of birds. <laughs> 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 We're not going to doubt you. <laughs> but it's become a phenomenon across it, Europe this, in terms of the radio. It has, it's been extraordinary because we've been doing it in some manner, shape or form for 22 years. Yeah. Wow. Somewhere along the line, I blinked. And I shouldn't have blinked because know, we've all yeah. got a bit older and this is <clears> 22 years. And then last year, when I changed jobs from the daily radio show to making nature programmes, Part of the plan was to approach the Eurovision, the European Broadcasting Union, excuse me, yeah. and uh, suggest this as a Europe-wide project. So we did that, and they accepted it. And it's gone on to win uh, awards. It won a major yes. award yeah. last year, the, the Rose Door, which is the kind of Oscars. It feels odd when you sit here and you say we won this award, but the Oscars yeah. of the radio. It doesn't get any bigger than the Rose Door. But when you that approached fantastic. the EBU, uh, what was the intention when you went to them to pitch the idea? that you wanted to get other countries involved? Yeah, or? because the, we had been doing it, as I said, in Ireland at that stage for 20 years. So most people here who listen to radio at any rate were familiar with what the Dawn Chorus yes, was. Yeah. Even if you weren't quite sure, but, oh, yeah, I think I've heard about that. Yeah. And I know it's the sound of birds singing in the morning. But what we wanted to do was extend it and show that great wave of sound as it travels across Europe. And you can only do that by having countries as far east as you can go yeah. and then follow the light as it's coming. Now, it's not a scientific programme in that sense. You know, it's not scientifically done because we might have Russia, we might have Finland, then we might skip a few, we might come over to the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. But it gives you an impression of, yeah, it's that time there, it's daylight there, and the birds are now singing there. And then you come right across to Ireland, and now the birds are singing here in Ireland and the so UK. So how many countries came on board last year? I'll I think we had in total tw 18, was it in total, and this year we have 21 wow. countries who are taking it or participating into it. So some countries take the last hour of it, so between five and six Irish time, because we work in Greenwich Mean Time, yeah, which is a, course, an hour yeah. earlier, just so everybody understands what we're talking about across Europe. But here it'll be between 5 and 6 a.m. And then a lot of countries tune in just to take that live broadcast because they don't want English. What was it, it was said um, yesterday? <laughs> uh, Junker said English is on its way yeah. or something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. And they don't want to speak English. They just want to listen to the birds because not everybody would have a good grasp of the English language. But a lot of the countries who would have English as a second language are we'll taking the entire broadcast or actually participating into it. But so the bird song is, is international, it's universal. It's universal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone but, can appreciate it. And it's a crossover. It. So a lot of the birds we'd have here, they have in Britain, they have in Europe, they have in India. But I was just going to explain that mm. or ask you that, it, like, as part of the programme, there's obviously a, you were on there with a panel, and are yeah. they explaining what we're listening to and what we should expect in this country? Yeah. What's different about yeah, the bird so song? We, in we have a great team here. We've been very lucky in, in natural history that there's super experts in Ireland. Yeah not just working on my programme, for a lot of radio stations and TV stations, yeah. and I mean that sincerely. So we have Richard Collins, <clears> who's <throat> our main uh, yeah. kind of consultant zoologist, Niall Hatch from Birdwatch Ireland, because 
We link up with Birdwatch Ireland and BirdLife International around Europe where we don't have OBs, we have experts on hand with tie lines. It's a little application we put on their telephones mm -hmm. or we give them a piece of equipment which turns their telephone basically into a mobile broadcasting unit and it works extremely <laughs> yeah. well. You know, we put a little microphone at the end of it and before you know it, you have fabulous sound Brilliant. from the remotest locations. Yeah. Then we have Aina Nilano, you know Aina who's yeah, on yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, every week. And then we've got uh, Terry Flanagan and uh, oh, uh, Eric Dempsey. So we have superb reporters, experts here. And the same then is replicated in all the other countries. So when we go to Poland or if we go to Finland or if we go to India as we are this year, they will have an expert on hand with a reporter stroke presenter Very expert. The, it's not necessary for me as a presenter to know all of the birds or know everything about their behaviours. Mm -hmm. It's enough for me to know what we're doing yes. and to tease that and information call on their knowledge. out of the experts because otherwise it gets very complicated. Yeah. I was listening to your sport uh, earlier watching the guys and they know so much about sport. It's yeah. like, it's, it's terrific to watch them because they can just talk about it. But I would be lost in that conversation. You know, yeah. Thank God you're there to help me out. <laughs> I, I am lost. When it comes to rugby, I just stand there and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're yeah, very yeah. convincing. <laughs> so that's, that's the basics. So ideal it. conditions. Um, yeah, you I, don't want this wind that we're no, experiencing at the not, moment. No, ideally not, because what the wind it doesn't stop the birds from singing. And I remember about four years ago, honestly, I nearly cried during the night because it had rained solidly for a week in Ireland, and it continued to rain right through the <laughs> dawn chorus. And I was just, like, I was really devastated because you get very involved in something when it's your baby. Yes, you know? You're invested. And um, so the rain did not stop the birds singing. The wind would not stop the birds singing. But the wind on the microphones is a bit of a nuisance yeah. Yeah. because it, yeah. and and it, it annoys people it. listening. Yeah. You know, so we have, and then we have so many microphones out. The RT engineering crew are fantastic. You know, we'd have 50 microphones out in St. Anne's Park tomorrow. And then we have several microphones at North Bull Island. And then we have Loch Ennell in County Westmeath. We've got the Burren. We've got um, uh, Carrick Finn in County Donegal. Then we've uh, teamed up with uh, BBC Radio Ulster, Radio Foil. So they carry the whole six hours live. And they'll be at Casa Lesby, which is a wetland reserve. So just in Ireland alone, we would have hundreds Sorry. of microphones out. And where's the wind? Which, <laughs> the wind is blowing on which one of them? So <laughs> you're wow. trying to find it. When, when, what time is it on from and until tomorrow? We start tonight on RT Radio 1 at midnight. Right. And then we go th right through to 6am in the morning. <sighs> you better go to bed. I, I, you know, I'm exhausted because all this week <laughs> I've been excited, delivering, yeah. delivering equipment and, uh, to the various locations and explaining yeah, yeah. to people what we need from them. It must be banjacks. And yeah. in Cork we're attempting something really unusual. We've got Professor John O'Halloran from UCC and his colleague Pat Smitty and they're going after a dipper. And a dipper is Ireland's only aquatic songbird. It lives in the river. This little bird walks up and down the river, feeds when it's walking in the water, under the water surface, and nests under little bridges. And you're going after them. We have a microphone right above one of the nests. <laughs> and with any wow. luck, in the morning, for the first mm. time in the history of broadcasting, you'll, you'll hear it. a dipper live Look at the on excitement radio. <laughs> it's like Christmas morning. It's ready to burst. Well, you know it's like the Eurovision for birds. It's exactly that, the Eurovision for birds. And we've got another single <laughs> bird because Will Young is doing it for BBC. That's right. That's right. Will you go home and go to bed, get some sleep, you have a big day. That's what I'm going to do. Thank you very Thank much for having us on. Thanks, Dermot. Pleasure. Give him no more coffee, guys.